people say that they like my tutorials and stuff, but sometimes the way these containers over here work kind of messes with them. And I'm going to try, Lord heaven help me, I want to try to explain this a little bit the best I can. And, and this is just the first video, so I'm not going to be able to cover it all. So let's begin with how the containers work. Okay, so if I control click a box, it automatically throws it in the center. Or I can just click on it and then I can place it wherever I want and I can hold the alt key to raise it up if I want to place it above the plane okay so or just hit return it'll place it in the middle so now as you can see when I place this box down here we have this little box object come up as you can see we're at the scene view so this is our scene view okay this is the top view the top layer of our sandwich so to speak um, you can also think of it if you use um, Photoshop this is a composition this is your first composition okay now we have this box object and you can look at this as a container like a Tupperware container like a plastic box that's holding our geometry okay this is the plastic box that's holding our scene our composition if I double click or hit return while this node is highlighted it takes me down inside of it and you can see inside that container you can see here I have a box this is a box node this up here on our scene level is our box object it's our box container this is the container that holds our actual box geometry we're at our object level the object level is the very top level where our containers are I'm gonna dive into this container by taking the lid off and looking in by double clicking and when I look in it takes me to my geometry level and this is where all my geometry hence the box the actual geometry of the box is there Okay, this is the actual box on the geometry level inside of this box object container. This isn't the actual box. It's just the container for the box. So we're at the scene level, has our container. We dive into the container. It takes us to our geometry level, and we have our actual geometry. And this is where we want to do most of our modeling. Okay, so now we have an option. We can go back up here and start a whole new composition if we want to. Let's control click a sphere. Now we have a sphere. Let me raise it up or bring it over a little bit. As you can see, this is our translate tools for our sphere. And I've translated it over a little bit. So let's undo that and go back to the center there. So now let's now you can see we have two compositions or two containers, two Tupperware containers. One's containing a box and the other is containing a sphere. We have two scenes. Let's dive into our sphere container and by George what we have there's our sphere okay now this is where I recommend you do any translating instead of doing translating and stuff from the scene level I recommend diving in to the container selecting your sphere and translating it from there and as you can see when I move it it adds an edit node or I could delete that edit node and it takes my ball right back to where it was you see um, I can right click and add type transform and add a transform node and now as you can see I can translate I mean as you can see our blue view flag is on our sphere so we're, we're looking at our spheres in our transform node is highlighted so that's why we get the template because we're viewing our sphere but we're looking at the template our you know controls of our transform so let's view our transform and you can see this transform node now is transforming our sphere we can move it up down okay so our transform node is kind of like an edit node and for every move you make you can make an, a separate transform node okay so you can go back and let's Let's add and let's have this transform node transform it up. And let's add this right click and add another transform. And have this one go to the right here. And let's view it. Now that's over there. Okay. This transform node, the ball's in that position. This transform node, the ball's back here. And in our normal one, is sphere. So you can see up the procedural nature of things. If I want to see the ball. I can hit the pink thing and template this one. So now I can see where the ball would be if it was, if I was viewing this node because I'm viewing the template. 
this just locks it. This templates it, okay? If I want to see the template of the original, now I can see the template of the original. Or I can look at the original and see the template of this one here. But as you can see, each individual operation gives me a separate node. Now if I delete these, it's going to take me right back to the center. Whereas if I go to my object level and transform this thing like this, you can see it moves it into transform things over here just like before, but it don't give me no transform node, no edit node, so I lose a lot of control, and sometimes it can mess you up when it comes to modeling. Um, so we have two scenes, a box object and a sphere node, so let's undo that. If we're going to move that, let's add a transform And let's move it that way by using it that way. Okay, so now let's go back up to object level. Now we have a box object and a sphere object in two separate containers. Okay, that's one option. Okay, so let's delete our sphere object and let's dive into our box object. Now if we want to, we can also hit tab and start typing sphere. And there's our sphere node. We can lay down a sphere node okay and now we have a sphere let's add a transform so we can move it you don't have to add the transform it will do it for you if you just click on it and start moving it you know so let's view our transform and let's translate this over okay so now we have a sphere and a box inside one container so what if you want to model the Statue of Liberty and you need a sphere for the head, a box for the body, and two boxes for the feet? You want to put them all in the Statue of Liberty container. What you'd do is you'd call this Statue of Liberty, and then you'd have as many boxes and spheres and stuff as you'd need to model the Statue of Liberty. You wouldn't want to add a box and a sphere and have a separate container out here for every one to make the Statue of Liberty. You want it to be one asset, so you'd do it inside one container. Now, we can only view one of these at a time. So if I want to, I can type, right click and type merge. Merge these two together, which you can merge as many as you want together. And now you can see we have two objects. And I can work on them as I see fit. It's merged them together and I can go back up to object level. And I'm viewing both of them. And like I said, I could name this bridge. Say we was going to build a bridge. Now our bridge contains a box and a sphere, and we have a transform node where we transformed our sphere, and if we want to move it, we can. We can move it, and now it's up there as you can see. Of course, we can go in and we can start modeling, add nodes as we see fit. Like I said, if you want to go in here and transform this, it automatically adds an edit node for you if you don't want to do it manually see so now we have this little network of nodes we have a box node in our original position we can template the edit node and we can see where it's at if we view this one we can view the edit node where we moved it to and template the original and see the original then we have our sphere and it works the same way where the translate the transform node moved it to and we can template the original yada 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 or we can view both of them and template the original box or template the sphere in this position or the box in this position it's really up to you but what you're going to view is where the blue flag is going to be okay and the, the, the preferences that you're going to be adjusting is what you're going to have highlighted so as you can see we're in our geometry level and we've made one complete project and it's in one container instead of making several containers to make one if that makes any sense now if I wanted to start say this is our bridge now I wanted to model the car going across the bridge instead of going up to the top and clicking a box I can do that it'll add a box object but let's hit tab <coughs> excuse me and type geometry geo and this will give us a generic geometry container and when I do that you can see it lays down our generic geometry Okay, so I'm going to dive into that, and we'll see we have a file node, which is if I wanted to bring in an OBJ, 
that I had from another object or another program or, or anything I wanted to bring in, I could go up here to my geometry file, click this here, locate to my hard drive and find it and bring that in as my geometry. But we don't want to use that. We don't want to bring in our own geometry. So I'm going to delete, I select it and delete it. And I'm going to tab and bring in a grid. There. Now we have a grid. Let's go to smooth shaded. Now we have a grid at the geometry level inside this generic geometry container. And you can name it whatever you want. Like, let's name it car. Now we have our car container, our bridge container. And we can go into our car container and we have our grid and we can start modeling from there.